okay so we will continue with uh, subtopic 2.6 so which is the temperature and zero law of thermodynamics so all of us know first law so maybe you have heard about first law of thermodynamic second law of thermodynamic but we have another uh, term called zero law so meaning zero law zero law of thermodynamic so we will see what is uh, what is that zero law of thermodynamics and we will study some important parts about the temperature because thermodynamic with a temperature is nothing so everything are uh, related to temperature okay so what is zero law of thermodynamics so if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with third body they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other so you can see some example here uh, so we have uh, iron which is under 50 degrees celsius and a copper 20 degrees celsius so after some time it will come into a thermal equilibrium so it will share the same temperature so if it share, share the same temperature we call it as a thermal equilibrium so here uh, iron from under 50 will become 60 and copper it will absorb some heat from the iron and it will increase from 20 to 60 so after some time these two bodies so body 1 and body 2 it achieve a thermal equilibrium with each other okay so that is a zero law of thermodynamic by replacing but if you see the definition if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with third body so it's not only two bodies so let's say you have another body uh, connected so it will achieve the thermal equilibrium so the third body we replace it with a thermometer okay like how we are taking the temperature from our body so we are using thermometer so thermometer so we put at the one of the body which already achieved equilibrium and you can get the reading so that is the zero law of thermodynamics so two bodies okay, two bodies are uh, having thermal equilibrium and you put the third body which is the thermometer in order to do the measurement so suppose if year 60 degrees celsius year 60 degrees celsius thermometer reading will be 60 because it achieved the zero law of thermodynamics okay so if in in exam i ask what explain zero law of thermodynamics so can you explain with the diagram so with your own words obviously not see if exactly from here so i know lah from where you took right so but you need to have the understanding because in this subject we are learning the principles of thermodynamics so you must understand how this thing happened so if you don't understand you need to go and do investigation so try to use whatever tool now we have a lot of tools we have online resources we have, we have chat gpt so you can put so you just put whatever question that i ask so try to put and try to learn extra okay so in the exam like how i say so you will be tested uh, using your logic to give logical answers so you need to tell based on your experience so you need to tell based on whatever you understood okay so whatever i teach in class is just a minimum information so you need to get extra information uh, from the online resources okay so zero law of thermodynamics two bodies are in thermal equilibrium if both have the same temperature reading even if they are not in contact so like this case the iron and copper they are in contact so we can say the it, uh, achieving a thermal equilibrium because of the contact we call call it as a conduction conduction is based on physical contact so the heat is transferred okay but uh, here is saying so let's say it is in an uh, environment it's in an environment and it's not touching each other so no physical contact but after uh, uh, if the two bodies having the same temperature after some time so we can say that they are having the same temperature reading and they are fulfilling the zero law of thermodynamics okay okay so temperature scales so normally uh, in thermometers so we will check all this okay so usually out of these four 
Which one is the common? Okay, Celsius is the common because we are used to it. So, so because it's easier to interpret. But what is the SI unit for temperature? So ask. What is the SI unit out of these four? Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin or Rankine? Kelvin. So Kelvin is the SI unit. Uh, if you follow the SI system, so Kelvin is the SI unit for temperature. But for our daily use, we will use Celsius uh, because most we are used to it. Okay, so Fahrenheit. So maybe in certain countries they are using Fahrenheit and Rankine very very unusual for you to meet. Okay, so uh, temperatures temperature scales and also all the readings so we can have based on SI unit so Malaysia is following SI unit okay certain countries uh, especially those who are under the influence of British they still maintain the English unit system okay so Fahrenheit is uh, falling under that okay then we have uh, other like pound so we are using kilogram they are using pound so we need to have a conversion okay in order to convert so thermodynamics temperature scale so is using Kelvin and Rankine okay so so gas at low pressure the relationship between temperature and pressure are given as okay so let's say you have four gases okay four gases you are having a different measuring point okay but after some time so it will be connected to negative 273 because we are using thermodynamic temperature scale ok so some conversion ok so I just open first ok so let's say so earlier I say if you want to understand ok since Malaysia we are using uh, Celsius so let's say you are going to foreign country so they are giving uh, the temperature in Kelvin so you must know how to convert so if you want to convert you need to have the formula ok so these are the formulas that we will use so Kelvin you want to convert to Celsius so you need to take these values ok so temperature in Kelvin equals to temperature in Celsius plus 273.15 ok it to be accurate ok so Rankine scale to Fahrenheit ok so these are the uh, formula Okay, Rankine scale to Kelvin scale. Okay, these are the formula, and Fahrenheit scale to Celsius scale. Okay, so uh, you you use this formula. Okay, so tomorrow uh, we will see some of the questions of the conversion. So it's like a, a examples for you to try. Okay, so I will give some certain questions. So one of the question will be related to this. So it's just for your exercise. Okay, so like tutorial. Okay, so we'll go to 2.7. Wait, sorry. Okay, so pressure. Okay, what is pressure? Pressure is having class in the evening. Okay, so you feel pr pressure, feel stress. All right. Okay, so pressure. So the definition is a normal force exerted by a liquid per unit area. So meaning you have an area, a small area you selected, it can be a circle or it can be a square. So you have an area and you are putting force in that particular area in, instead of putting elsewhere. So you continuously put a force in that area, a particular area, so then it will become pressure. So that's why when you, you have like anxiety or what, certain part of your head will feel pain. If you have headache, so at uh, at certain point you feel headache. So because you are having pressure at that particular point, so maybe because you are th overthinking, or maybe over because of your emotions, so a lot of things. Okay, so when you are continuously put a force in a particular area, it will become a pressure. Okay, so pressure normally we will calculate based on bar. Okay, so one bar equals to 10 to power of 5 Pascal ok 1 atm atmospheric pressure equals to 101325 Pascal so this is 
the units that we will use okay so if you have car you want to uh, you go to petrol station so you want to elevate your tires so you will see the mission for you to, uh, for you to air pump the tire okay so you can see the scales there so they will have either it will be in pascal or it will be in bar okay so this is the conversion unit okay and there are three types of pressures okay first one we call it as a absolute pressure the absolute pressure is the actual pressure at the given position so uh, and then we we have a gauge pressure so i notice in your lecture note it put gage so it's supposed to be gauge so gauge means it's a apparatus so dalam bahasa melayu we call alat alat pengukur okay so gauge so we have gauge pressure so the difference between the absolute pressure and the local atmospheric pressure and we have a vacuum pressure so the pressures below atmospheric pressure and you have cer certain uh, explanation here okay so i just want to summarize for you to understand because when i see this i also got confused uh, because uh, this lecture note is not belongs to me okay so i just uh, reuse uh, but i want to explain to you so what are the differences between so absolute pressure gauge pressure and vacuum pressure okay so normally uh, at particular so we are at the sea level so we will have a atmosphere sorry okay so normally at the sea level so you will have so atmospheric pressure okay so so atmospheric pressure is the pressure in our surrounding so last week if you are in the class and you already listened to the video i already explained about atmospheric pressure so different place of the different parts of the world will have different atmospheric pressure okay so last week i told um the differences between sea level and also on the eel so where will be uh, the atmosphere uh, where the atmospheric pressure will be higher so sea level or on the eel yeah sea level so how many of you say sea level okay how many of you say uh on the eel okay so it's okay but normally i will ask questions like this then i will add one more question why <laughs> so why so that that's why we are studying this subject right so whatever things that you giving answer so if you define it properly i will accept even in your exam so if you say is on the eel so maybe your the, the way of you viewing the particular situation will be right if you so you need to define okay so atmospheric pressure so i gave the explanation last week okay so where it will be higher so uh, it will be on the sea level or at the eel who still remember i i can hear some answers but okay so we we have our earth and we have core inside so this is earth core okay so that's where the magnetic or the gravitational force is starting okay and you at the sea level so you are here okay and you have a eel here so based on logic where will the gravity gravity will be higher at okay
Okay, now you answer. Sea level or on the hill? Sea level. Why? Because it's nearer to the earth core. And the gravitational pull. The pressure is higher because of gravity. Okay. Understand? Okay, now where the pressure will be higher? Atmospheric pressure. And we have a certain part of the world uh, where uh, there will be th their, their normal atmospheric pressure is below the sea level. So, compared to sea level and below the sea level, who will experience higher atmospheric pressure? Below the sea level. Because of the same thing. Because of gravity. Okay. So, understand. Okay. So, go back to uh, differentiating the pressures. Okay. So, you have atmospheric pressure. So, according to my explanation earlier, so different, different part of the world will have different, different atmospheric pressure. Okay. Okay. So, this is the first thing. So, atmospheric pressure is the atmos uh, pressure in the atmosphere. Okay. Or in the surrounding. Okay, so we have an atmosphere here, so we have a pressure. So it's already there naturally. So if the pressure that you are measuring is lesser than atmospheric pressure, we call this vacuum pressure. If it's below the atmospheric pressure. So you already have the atmospheric pressure around and when you are measuring something, it is below the atmospheric pressure, we call it as a vacuum pressure. Okay, so that's a vacuum pressure. So the pressure below the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is below. If you are measuring something and the pressure is higher than atmospheric pressure. Okay. We call this as a gauge pressure. Okay, so you are measuring something. So let's say you want to elevate the uh, wheel, okay, the tire. So you are putting air inside, and because of that, the pressure in the in the in the tire is increasing. So that's showing that it's a gauge pressure. Okay, then one more pressure is. Yeah, so this is Sorry, I already explained three pressures So this is absolute vacuum So absolute vacuum means Pressure equals to zero Meaning This is something that is in the outer space So you can't leave there because no pressure And of course, because no oxygen, but you will float around because you will be at the absolute vacuum. So on this earth, you only can produce absolute vacuum in the lab scale, in the lab. But that one also is not exactly zero. So you cannot create something that God created. You cannot recreate because it's already there in the nature. Okay. So this is absolute vacuum. So which is? Uh, from the the lab, if uh, in the earth is uh, only can be produced in the lab, okay. So we have atmospheric pressure. I already explained vacuum pressure. I already explained gauge pressure. I already explained. So what else? So absolute pressure. Okay. So let's say so gauge pressure. So it will always will start from zero. Yeah, atmospheric pressure. Uh, Okay, so for gauge pressure, atmospheric pressure will be, so it, it will be zero. Okay, so above this, so you just take the value from the atmospheric pressure. But for uh, absolute, so absolute pressure, so absolute pressure you are taking from absolute vacuum, which is the P equals to zero. Okay. So now I want to ask. So compared to gauge pressure and absolute pressure, which one is more accurate?
so who are saying gauge pressure is more accurate okay absolute pressure who say absolute pressure is more accurate okay so the second question why so earlier we 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 saw atmospheric pressure will change according to the places okay so above the eel it will be different above the sea level will be different so meaning this is not fixed but but if you are measuring something and you start this as a zero so it will be accurate for that particular area but on the eel it might be not be the same uh, so so in a simple way if you are measuring the pressure of the tire on the sea level and you are measuring the pressure of the tire in the uh, in the on the eel or different part of the world so you don't not necessarily have to be same because it depends on the atmospheric pressure so if you want to say more accurate pressure so it will be absolute pressure because it's starting from vacuum so everywhere you go so pressure equals to zero will be higher uh, it will be the same but the only problem will be for us to understand we always like it to start from zero so that you are easy to understand so that's why we prefer gauge pressure but even though it's not accurate hmm. so in Malay we say antampi lah right uh, so it's like that uh, but more in uh, thermodynamic term because all of you will become an engineer so as an engineer you cannot depend on gauge pressure because it is depends on the place okay depends on the place unless you are developing something for that particular region uh, then you can consider okay using the gauge pressure okay it's always uh, good for you to investigate all these pressures okay so we have seen today four types of pressure the first one is atmospheric pressure then vacuum pressure gauge pressure and also absolute pressure okay so anyone have question anyone want me to explain this again okay this is a very common question in exam okay so make sure you understand so make sure you understand make sure you listen back okay okay i think i already explained here so i assume this thing is same like how i explained but i don't really see this okay so variation of pressure with depth okay actually this i already explained earlier okay so variation of pressure with depth okay let's say you have a z uh, we always uh, linked it with uh, the height so different heights okay so z1 and z2 different height and this is your x x axis so which is the width okay so if you see the arrow so here you have uh, if the measuring point is at the same height okay ketinggian yang sama okay same height so the pressure at the each point measuring point will be the same but as it goes the uh, a lower okay so you can see the arrow is increasing so meaning here the pressure is lesser as it goes to, uh, near to the earth core it will be higher and here you see so you have another level so all the measuring point along this line will be the same uh, so if you compare this line and this line which one is longer okay so here okay so p1 the pressure is higher than pressure 2 okay so it can be the same uh, on the surface as well as in, inside the water okay inside the water okay so there are some of the derivations so it's actually explaining the same thing so x uh, so delta x is the differences in the uh, width and delta delta y uh, is uh, differences in the 
uh, the length and z is differences in the i okay so if you check so you will you will understand so whatever things that i have explained okay so when the variation of density with elevation is known okay so then you will get this so the all our derivations okay so i will explain so earlier we have checked okay here is above the uh, ground above the ground so this is inside the water because fluid consists of two things so fluid can be either liquid or gas okay so above above the surface is gas okay so now we will see uh, inside the water okay so you, we have the water okay so as you can see normally water so let's say this is in a container so you have a container and you fill it with water so you will have the surface surface of the water okay so the surface the pressure is atmospheric pressure because it's exposed to the pressure uh, atmospheric so this is the atmospheric pressure and as it goes deeper okay so this is the i h okay so pressure here and pressure here you can see here the pressure above equals to atmospheric pressure and here pressure below is atmospheric pressure plus the rho g h so rho is the density of the water so let's say is is uh, is water maybe different material will have a different density gravity will be the same 9.81 and h is the height so the more deeper it goes okay so the pressure will be higher okay so uh, okay so p equals to p atm so this is the formula that we will always use for calculation okay pressure equals to atmospheric pressure plus rho gh okay and gauge pressure as we told earlier atmospheric pressure will become zero okay atmospheric pressure will become zero so zero plus rho gh so gauge pressure become rho gh okay so depends on the question okay so we will do some questions tomorrow i think got around six question that you can try uh, so you can get familiarized with this okay so so you can see uh, at this point is same like the atmospheric pressure as it goes down so the pressure is increasing Okay, that's why recently the submarine ex huh? exploded. It's not exploded. What they call? I forgot the term. So implode is it? Uh, implode, right? So you go inside. It's because of pressure. <coughs> because of the material. So that's why when you are building something for underwater or a certain uh, certain uh, region, so you need to un understand the nature of the environment. Uh, you need to understand the atmospheric effect of atmospheric pressure and also uh, the the depth the depth that you are going to deal so because the certain material only can last for certain depth so above that it will either explode or implode okay so you need to so that's your role as engineers so you need to have all this calculation okay so not like you just uh, receive a salary and you just want to work 8 to 5 it's not like that so we have a social responsibility that we need to carry because we need to help the other human being right so that's our nature of work even though underpaid okay i need to emphasize that okay so let's say this is a gas so this is in water this is in uh, normal air so let's say you have a room okay you have a room so atmospheric pressure or the pressure at the top will be uh, lower than the bottom because of the same explanation I give because bottom is nearer to the earth core and the gravitational pull will be higher okay so we will see another scenario see in the water so we already know this so as the depth increases or the height increases inside the water the pressure will become higher 
okay you can see the arrow here so arrow here is shorter compared to arrow here so it shows that the the pressure is higher and this is the edge and we can see this this surface is uneven okay so the summer okay so you can see suddenly you have like spike so different different jaws okay so you can jurung so different different type so so normally inside the uh, in the ocean so it will be like this it will be uneven but based on the understanding of pressure so we can understand that so point a point b point c point d point e point f and point g all at the same height so their their, pre, their pressure is the same it doesn't matter provided so that's a one condition the density must be the same meaning the material must be the same so here you can see it's in the water so water is sharing the same density so 1000 okay 1000 so as long the height is the same and the density is the same so it fulfill so atmospheric pressure plus okay height is fixed so it's the same so uh, density is the same gravity you cannot change it's the same so meaning so it will become the same same value okay but you can see here so you have a different part here so even though the level is the same the height is the same with i h and i are the sa same height from the water but here the density is not the same here mercury, mercury here water so the density we know mercury is 13 times higher density than water so what happened so it's not fulfilling this equation so pressure of h is not equals to pressure of i okay so this is the easier question that i can ask okay so you need to know two things are important one is the height height must be the same and the density must be the same okay so when you receive this kind of question investigate first whether it's sharing the same height and the same density or not okay so some uh, some explanation pressure in a fluid at rest so meaning it's not moving is independent to the shape or cross section so meaning the shape is not important okay of the container it changes with the vertical distance so vertical distance but remain constant in other direction okay so other direction is like this so it will be the same by as long this is the same okay okay screen uh, two more slides okay pascal's law okay pascal's law it says that the pressure applied to a confined fluid increases the pressure throughout by the same amount okay so you can see here so how many of you wondered how this small apparatus can lift one big car Okay, we always will think right so how this thing so maybe there's uh, something inside no it's using the pascal's law okay then you can see in, in the car workshop so they just press a small uh, leg, uh, leg pump so suddenly the car goes up so it's not magic so maybe magic they use this so we don't know but this is engineering okay so this is related to pascal's law so meaning you have two parts here you have a smaller piston here you have a bigger piston but here you have the area and also the pressure you have you have the pressure and you apply the force so the force generated here and the force generator here will be the same so that's why even though you put a smaller force here it is enough to lift the car because it obeys the pascal's law I think you already studied this in SPM. Okay, so I hope you understand. Lah. Okay, so this is the formula. So pressure 1 equals to pressure 2. Pressure 1 equals to pressure 2. So meaning pressure, the formula is force over area. Okay, force over area. Earlier we have seen force over area. So force 1 and area 1 
equals to force 2 uh, over area 2. Okay, so you rearrange, so you will get this. Uh, A2 over A1 is also called as an ideal mechanical advantage. It's just a term. Okay, term used. Okay, so meaning is the same. Okay, in the hydraulic lift. Okay, so this one I will cover tomorrow. Okay, so far, any question? Okay, 10 more minutes. Any questions that you want to ask? Okay, I prefer face to face class because I can interact with you. Okay, so you can ask. It's okay. We all here to learn. So, no need to be shy to ask questions. I always encourage to ask questions. Any question? So no question? Okay. I assume you understand. So later I will upload this video. Okay, make sure you listen again. Okay, if you don't understand, if you still have question, so you can ask tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our it's like a tutorial, mini tutorial. So even you have question you can ask. Okay, I encourage for you to bring questions. Okay, I think the lecture note is already with you. So you already can see the other slides as well. So you, you can prepare the question before. I always encourage my student to study the lecture note before the class. Okay, so when you study in the class, you will understand better because you already know certain stuff. It's not something new for you. Okay, so uh, if you don't have anything, so I will take attendance. Uh, you can off. Okay,